Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about transporting models. Well, hey guys, welcome to another Interstellar Mother. We're here at Wonderfest, and at Wonderfest, you can find a lot of different kits, obviously, but you can also find accessories uh, for, for our hobby. And one of the unique accessories that I came across here uh, has to do with transporting models. Now, over the last several years, we've seen the release of some really cool looking model kits, uh, particularly in large scale. And two of the ones that are very popular are the Eagle and the Enterprise. Now, obviously, you spend a lot of money on these kits, you spend a lot of time detailing, and sometimes they become very expensive commissions and you have to think how are you going to transport something like that without damaging it well my friend Tom Eilerman here has devised a way to do that so Tom why don't you tell us a little bit about your system that you've come up with here all right uh, about two years ago Gene Davis had came to me and said hey Tom uh, I had this refit commission from a guy in Ohio and they just bubble wrapped it put it in a box of peanuts shipped mm -hmm. it to him and it was in about 10 pieces mm -hmm. and I said you know since I'm an engineer let me take a look at this idea and it was probably six or eight months later that I actually decided I need to start doing something because we had last year's Wonderfest coming up. Yep. And I decided, since I'm a 1999 fan and part of the club, I would work on the Eagle Box first uh -huh. since I was going to be at Mike Reader's booth. And we had a pretty good, um, well, how would I say it, a pretty good interest last year. Enough uh -huh. that I said, you know, this could be something, a, a market, uh -huh. not a big market, but yep. for these guys that are building like the refit, three, four thousand dollar commission and you put it in a box and you try to ship it and roll the dice oh yeah and the majority of the people that get these don't have the skill set to fix it if it comes in damaged right so i thought to myself if we do the shipping containers build specifically around i know there's going to be a price to it but if you're investing four thousand yep. and you pay 225 to 230 for a box yep. it's it's a reasonable investment sure and the thing is we've, we've test shipped the eagles i think we've sold 22 of them we've probably shipped about 14 eagles cross country to other countries uh -huh. with a good success uh, the boxes are reusable it's not a one and done type of thing so if I'm done shipping my Eagle I can turn around and sell the box to somebody else so I won't have hundreds of boxes in service right but the modelers can sell them amongst themselves but I'm really primary looking to have the, um, the builders have a way to guarantee their their projects sure. to get to somebody yeah, right. um, this particular box here the refit we just did a test and I know you saw all the test right. video. Uh -huh. We throw it out the second story window of my barn, then right. kick it around the concrete, throw it down the staircase, and yeah. open up. It's unscathed. Uh, I have done some other tests when we're doing first idea renditions where there's minor adjustments. You know, uh -huh. we, if you have a little lateral movement in the box, you, your models have to be secure. Right. And you've got to also have a bulkhead system in there that transmits force across the box that right. doesn't go into the model. Okay. So we'll get into a little detail of that here yeah. in a second. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see what uh, one of these looks like here. All right. This is the refit kit. Now, I've got multiple layers. Let me pull some of the keys apart. Everything interlocks. If you notice here, like where the secondary hall supports are, this interlocking key system holds the model from bouncing up and down. So do these bulkheads. And as you see, the bulkheads go across the box from side to side. I'll get a few more of these out of here. As you take these out piece by piece, you notice that the nacelles, we have points of contact of the nacelles like this. Now they're, they're placed strategically. Where the bulkhead goes across, so if you get a side hit in the box, that force is transmitted across the box. The points of contacts are not going to crush in and, and move the nacelles. If you have a point of contact, say mid nacelle like here, and the foam was hit and the box would move in, yeah, you could have a break in, in the model. Uh -huh. So we've, we've thought through some of these issues. I like these pieces here. They hold, they're set to hold the saucer here. This bulkhead holds the saucer here. The middle one that I took out first holds the entire model down. So once we have a second layer, let me pull something out real quick, kind of get ahead of myself. Whoops. There we go. Before everybody took all this out, this is the top cap, and then we have four vertical um, bulkheads on top there. So when you actually close the box lid down, this holds everything in place. So there's no movement in the model whatsoever. Now I'll pull these last couple pieces out here. 
as you pull this, you see there's no movement in the model whatsoever. We've got we've got a little bit of float in the nacelles. They're not actually touching the bottom piece of foam, but see the points of contact keep the nacelles from flexing out. And then if you do have an impact, it transmits into the foam. Now as I pull this model out, see how it comes out snug? And there we've got a model that is not broken. The nacelles in this particular model usually break here because they've only got three three pins. Uh -huh. The glue joint is not the greatest. It's not like the TOS. It's a mortise and tenon. It's a much better design. Yeah. But see, there is some. I mean, there's some flex in it. Yeah. But if you get this model smashed, especially the impacts here, the nacelles snap off, and that, that's what we wanted to stop in this process. Right. As you see down into the model cavity. We made interlocking foam tabs, so this piece actually is what supports the saucer. Wow. These two bulkheads hold up the secondary hull, so that's the primary support of the model. Then everything else kind of encapsulates the model to keep it from moving. And of course, we've explained how we transmit the force through all the bulkheads. Right. Now, one other thing, I'm going to pull this back, and I'll show you what the outer box looks like. Now, this box is packed inside the outer box. In the outer box, we got one inch soft foam, and the soft foam acts like, pardon the pun, inertial dampener on the bridge. <laughs> so this box can actually uh, move inside the other box. So if it gets a hard drop or hit, it absorbs a lot of it in the outer box before it actually gets to the model inside. So that was the concept on these larger models, is try to take that sheer impact force, neutralize it in the outer box as much as we can before it actually gets into the model kit that's inside. So we've had pretty good success with that. Well, that's fantastic. Quite a bit of engineering to even design something like this, right? I probably spent on the first TOS probably 30 hours in designing the box. I first had to model the TOS into SolidWorks. I do everything in SolidWorks. Uh -huh. And then, uh, then I built the, the foam baffles around that. We had the first kit prototyped. I made three renditions to the first TOS. I learned a lot in the TOS when we yeah. built those. And then the refit actually only took me about 10 hours because I actually had a TOS foam kit, so we put the refit on. I started doing some minor adjustments, yep. took the majority of the profiles that were similar, kept them, but then changed the actual shapes that had to be. Each model is a little different shape. The saucer is 16 inches where it's 14 inches on the TOS. The nacelle length is a little longer. I mean, this model is just a little bigger and a little different shape, so I can't have the same box, same profiles right. for both models. It's impossible. I would love to have one box at all, like we right. have, have in the Eagle box, but yeah. you just had to make two different systems. Sure. Okay. So great. that's this one. That's great. Now, another uh, system you designed, or was this your first system then this was for the was Eagle? This actually was the first one we brought last okay. year. This it was the test kit we had at Mike's. And okay. Let's take a look at this one. On the Eagle box, it's a little bit different scenario. Uh, it's a smaller ship. We, uh, I first designed this in a different foam. We ran 22 of these. I used a polypropylene, which is a little rougher foam. It's not like, let me grab a piece out of here. There's a difference between polypropylene. It's an it's a open cell. It's a little larger. It's a little more abrasive. So I will, in the next rendition of this, switch to the crosslink. The crosslink's a very firm foam. We use this in the fitness equipment seats. Uh, but it won't scratch as testing. So that's a major concern with our modelers if we have a shipping system that will not damage the paint jobs. Because yeah. especially in the refit, a lot of guys are hand painting all this Aztec. And the last thing you want to do is mar or scratch that up. So I will switch this kit to this type of foam. It's a little more expensive but it's more forgiving and it actually has more absorption even though it's firm than what this film does the, the key points that we had to look at with the Eagle was we've got a lot of greebly stuff with the thrusters and, and all underneath the bottom you've got your spring-loaded uh, landing gear you've got engine pods now I know like the the pre-built kits come with the engine pods and the CM off the ship but most modelers build these they build them fixed so I, I, I figure we better build this box to incorporate the entire ship yep. so we made uh, pod holders so we have full depth for this uh, the landing gear to go in we've got access points for all the items that are on the bottom side of the ship um, in some of the drop test I've got four inches or four ounces of lead in the nose of mine for the springs so the snap joint in the CM was coming loose because of the extra weight so we put a support out front to help offset that now there's three type of Eagles well four if you count the Eagle 
eagle without a, a pod on. So uh -huh. you can ship this with the eagle with just a spine, one with a passenger pod, the uh, lab pod, or the cargo pod. And how we made this box fit all four was this is set up for the passenger. Now, if I'm going to have the cargo pod, we pull out a key on the front and back like this. It drops this section down a half inch. So when you put the uh, cargo pod in, it fits the cargo pod. Wow. Now, if you're going to do the lab pod, we put these back in and we take all the keys out in the middle like this. Now you've got room for the lab pod. So with your lab pod sticks out here, we've got the cutouts for the thruster uh, area. Then there's a top clamshell that goes over top of this that encapsulates the whole ship. And we've, we, since I had extra room, a lot of the guys will have like. Uh, Canisters. Like, yeah, the canisters for the cargo pod. So you can actually put the canisters or extra engine bells down. And we made as much storage space in here for some of the accessories that the guys, the ships are going to use. But that's really kind of the simplistic section of the Eagle. Uh, there's another bulkhead that goes in front that actually holds the nose of the CM up. So we've, we've, we've got two points of contact holding the two weakest sections of the ship because the glue joint on these around the spine and the cages, there's not a lot of surface area for plastic. I think it, they could have thickened this up a little bit and it would have helped the shipping but you know we've had a lot of success with this kit we've had a few kits that broke apart mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple builders that would paint all the sub assemblies then glue the painted surfaces together mm -hmm. well I don't care how good your box is I can't keep you know a non monolithic bond plastic to plastic from breaking if there's paint between the layers yeah um, so well, you can tell this was designed by a true fan because only a true fan would know all these different <laughs> configurations of the eagle we're nerding out here for sure yep. well Augie, i've been following your post and it's a great honor that well, you came to that. meet well. me and talk to me about our systems yeah. but you know you really benefit all the modelers out there like i saw the interview you did with todd i've seen all the interviews you've done with other modelers and yeah. you know what it's nice to see somebody out there you know praising other people's work mm -hmm. instead of just out tooting their own horn like some modelers right. do on their site so <laughs> no, we, we take our hats back off well, to you thank you very much and i'm sure scotty would call you a miracle worker. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, very good. Now, there's one other thing that you were talking to me about oh, yeah. yesterday, and so a lot of these models come with um, stands that are not very good. Well, Thomas thought about that too. Let's take a look at that. Okay, last year I had this in concept in CAD, and I had actually approached Ed Holt, who uh, casts. But I didn't realize that George Takis was a molder. I've known George of the 99, and I don't, for some reason, I didn't get the memo. I don't know what it was. So we, we started discussing uh, a base idea that I had. So I had had Steve Burns uh, print this for me as a prototype and what my concept is is to have a base that has a nice look for Trek. We'll probably develop like a Klingon version for the Contenga and others. I'll probably look at doing something uh, for a Battlestar Galactica, maybe possibly for you know mm -hmm. Star Wars. But in this one here, this stainless steel cover will have all the switches in. This stainless steel cover will cover up the speaker area. We'll have two speakers in here, one for, you know, just general music and sound. The other, like when the photons are firing, that disrupts whatever else is going on. So we decided to do two speakers. Now we'll flip this over. And this is designed so that we can put the boards. This is a tenant control board from Ralph, the mega board that does everything for the Enterprise. So we'll have little standoffs in here. Take a little hot glue, hit the two, the four corners, the board to stay in. And then you're able to then route your wires underneath and through the cutouts that we have to wire to the switches and on this side we have the we'll have the plug to actually plug the unit into the wall wow. so and when you have a four thousand dollar build and you have yeah. a board go out most of these guys that are buying these commissions they don't have the skill set to tear this model apart and then repaint it weather exactly. whatever yeah. and most of your failures in a model are from the boards when the boards burn out you've got to be able to replace them quickly yeah. so this way you just you know flip it over take the cap off the bottom you know replace the board uh, Ralph and I have been talking about how we can come up with maybe a harness that can just plug in, but this has got 32 wires on it, so to, it's going <laughs> to yeah. take something to figure out a harness for that. So yeah. it may just yeah. be that the entire wire kit comes out of the tube. You have to run the wire through the tube, which is a minor concession to do, but now you don't have to worry about destroying a model yeah. to, to open up. And we're after talking with um, George, here's one of his... Yeah. 
Wow, check, take a look at this. This he does really, really nice work. So I, I think having George cast the Trek bases and what other genre that we decided to do will be mm -hmm. a win-win. Yeah. He does very, very, very good work. So I, I think wow. we found the vendor that's going to do our product for us, and we're hoping that we have a price point for sale of this base or other ones between 150 and the 195 range, depending on if we put speakers, some board. We may offer it with boards in it. We may offer a, a base version, say for you know $100 or $120, and then you can like upgrade. I want stainless, or I want this, or I want that. That way they can kind of build it up as they go. Right. Okay. Well, there you have it. I hope you found this very interesting. Uh, it's a fantastic system to transport models. You can tell that Tom is very, um, you know, uh, what can I say? Like I said, a miracle worker. So, uh, Tom, tell us about if they want to find out more information about this, uh, where do they find out information? Well, there's a couple places you can find out our work. Uh, on Facebook, we I have a page called Nebula Shipyards, uh, but we also have a Nebula Shipyards group for models where I post more for that, and that's a genre of all sci-fi ships, including Voice of the Bomb of Sea. I love Irwin Allen, so yeah. that's the best sci-fi submarine. Yeah, right. But I have, my website is Ridge Tech Solutions, and that's not spelled normal. That's, the tech is T-E-K, mm -hmm. Solutions. And I'm a consulting engineer. I've been in the fitness world for 30 years, so okay. I'm taking my knowledge there and transmitting it into this industry. So we've yet to produce a Nebula Shipyards website. I've got a construction page up for it. Yep. So between Shipyards, Group for Modelers, mm -hmm. and my website, they can get my email address and yep. contact me there. Yeah. I do do contract work and design, so if somebody yeah. needs SolidWorks modeling design work, yeah. I, I do that. Yeah. So and they can find you on Facebook. They can find me on Facebook, Tom Eilerman, uh, E-I-L-E-R-M-N. And Space 1999 Props and Ships. Yep, right. so we, okay. we have Props and Ships, Nebula Shipyards, okay. quite a few places. And there, we, right. we start a new page called Model Shipping Systems, okay. which is just around the boxes itself. All right. Thanks, Tom, for sharing your time. I know you're busy today. Uh, we appreciate you having on. Uh, All right. Thanks, Take care. Bye-bye.